Yes, good, uh, good evening and welcome everybody. Can I get one more time in the chat as, just to confirm that you can hear me? We've had some technical difficulties with audio. Excellent, excellent. We're gonna work through them and we are still gonna get session one in the books of the North Carolina Educator UAS co cohort. <clears throat> I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, today's session, Drone Use Today, and our unboxing of the Tello EDU. The first thing that I want everyone to do right now, if you haven't already charged your batteries up, is take your charging hub, Take your batteries, at least one, stick it into the charger and plug that into the wall. Because when we get to the point where we're going to turn on our tellos, we're going to need at least 50% battery. If maybe you don't have the charging hub, but you have the drone only, you can always plug one battery into the drone and then plug the USB cable directly into the drone to charge one battery that way. The charging hub is great because you can slide three batteries inside and just let it go. So I'd like to start off by welcoming all of our members. The North Carolina Educator UAS cohort is a collective of 50 educators and we are growing from across the state of North Carolina that are willing to support and facilitate the integration of drones into the classroom. The NCE UASC will through virtual content that includes webinars like this, explainer videos, live demonstrations, and more to develop or help its members develop an understanding of the following. How are drones being used across the state to support businesses? What companies are using drone technology and the jobs that are becoming available across the state? And the third thing is how coding and programming drones can be integrated into the classroom. The members of this cohort are at the bleeding edge of the drone industry and in a position to make an impact on your town, city, county, and state. Supporters of the NC EUASC are the following at this point, and we're always looking for more supporters. The North Carolina Business Committee for Education, who's creating connections between education curriculum and the overall work readiness of citizens across the state. A big shout out to Morgan Crawford, who's the deputy director, who has really enabled this cohort to come together. Also, Stemrold City, who's exposing students to emerging technologies as early and often as possible to inspire the next generation of scientists, engineers, and entrepreneurs. Jeff Epps, who is joining us during this meeting, is the Chief Executive Officer and Master STEM Coach with Stemrold City. We also have 910 drones supporting the NCE UASC. We are helping individuals, businesses, and organizations leverage the advanced capability of drones through certified training, sales, and support. I am Paul Rossi, the Chief Operations Officer uh, and founder of 910 Drones. At this time, I want to go ahead and have Jeff Epps jump on and introduce himself to the co cohort. Hey everybody, I think you all remember me. I was uh, your presenter 
uh, at the conference and it's just great to have everyone back together and you know I want to say kudos to Paul uh, for for putting uh, this cohort together. I am so excited about this and all of the different things we're going to learn and and be able to um, work with you to integrate this into your classroom. So this goes far beyond the conference. It goes far beyond you getting the drone. Uh, we're going to explore how do we utilize this drone to raise student achievement in the classroom? How do we integrate it into the math classroom? How do we integrate it into the English classroom, into the science classroom, and even the social studies classroom? And then we're gonna make sure that you continue to be able to find funding to keep supporting what's going on in your schools. There are grants out there, folks. And you know we just need to find out where they are and we'll provide that assistance in helping you fill out those grants and get that funding that you need. And in, in, the, in these unprecedented, unprecedented times, you know, remote learning, it, it's, it's, it's gonna be around a while. So we need to go ahead and look at how can we utilize this technology to reach those students uh, while they're at home. So just sit back and relax. We're gonna have a lot of fun with this. Thanks, Paul. Hey, thank you very much, Jeff. <clears throat> Looking forward to having you uh, help support everything that we're doing. And I know you also played a role in bringing um, an initial push of these drones um, along with Morgan through the STEM Connect uh, webinars and events. I know that took place at the end of last year. I now want to just introduce myself, give everyone a little bit of background on uh, who I am and why I have a, a care and desire to kind of drive the integration of drones within the state and to see um, more of this education get into uh, in front of our students. I, as I mentioned before, I'm Paul Rossi, the Chief Operations Officer of 910 Drones. 910 Drones was founded in 2018. We're based in Fayetteville, North Carolina, just working with individuals, businesses, organizations all across the, the state, teaching them the regulatory side, the flight side, all that's required to really build out a effective drone program. I hold a private pilot and remote pilot certificate from the Federal Aviation Administration. I hold a Bachelor's of Aeronautics from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. I served as an aircraft electrician in the United States Army. I deployed once and am a service disabled veteran. In addition to serving as the Chief Operations Officer with 910 Drones, I am also the Site Operations Manager with Causey Aviation Unmanned. Causey Aviation Unmanned is working with Flytrex to conduct drone deliveries to residents' yards here in the state of North Carolina. A little bit later in the presentation, we will discuss uh, Flytrex and the drone deliveries that are taking place here in our state. One organization to be aware of is the AUVSI North Carolina chapter. AUVSI has been around since the 70s. It's the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. I serve as the community outreach coordinator for the AUVSI NC chapter. I am also uh, a member of the North Carolina High School's Drone Advisory Council, serving as an implement implementation specialist helping high schools in the state integrate drones and supporting their CTE drone courses. All right, that was enough about me. Now we're gonna jump into session one. We're gonna be discussing the drone that some of you have, any members who have joined after the new year, don't have their 
Tello drone or their drone blocks membership at this point, but we'll be getting them prior to February and our second session on February 9th. So for everyone that has their Tello, today we're gonna to be doing the unboxing, go over what's included, the parts, activating the drone and touching on the NCDOT commercial and government permits, which each educator in the cohort will need to get. It doesn't cost anything and you can take a test online. We'll also talk about your drone blocks account and we'll get that set up. And to end this session, we're gonna be talking about drone use today in North Carolina, focusing on how drones are being used and what companies are using them. This opportunity to understand how drones are being used across the state is going to help each of you understand how to bring that drone that you now have into the classroom to connect with students. At this point, it's gonna be enough of the PowerPoint. We're gonna unbox the drone. If you have any questions at this point, please try not to use the chat section. There is a Q&A section in your, I'm not sure where it might be exactly, but if you can find the Q&A section and you submit your questions there, uh, Jeff, hopefully he'll be uh, able to kind of look that over and jump in if needed with any questions or just provide some direct assistance. Jeff Epps is a, a master Tello operator. Uh, he's uh, uh, well versed in the Tello and um, will be will be there to support us as we go through this. So I went too far. Let's do a new share. Stop share. And Jeff, if you want to make, I don't know if you can make my video the main screen or highlight my video, it might make things show up a little bit larger. Awesome. So everybody, this is the DJI Tello EDU. What we need to do at this point is we need to take our battery, the one that we've been charging. And we wanna go ahead and we're gonna slide that in to the back of the drone. The battery has, on one side it has a raised notch. That's the top of the battery. So that will point toward the top when you put it in the drone. Slide that in and we'll get a click. And we're gonna take our cell phone. You're gonna to go to either the Apple store or the app store or the Google Play store. Thought I'd get this to work. Maybe not. And in the Google Play Store, I was trying to do a sh screen share. We're going to download the Tello EDU app.
Hello, edu. In the Apple App Store, it's going to look like this. I'm not sure in the Google Play Store exactly. One of those technology days where it's not working. Once we have that app downloaded, we're going to open up the app. And this is what the inside of the app is going to look like. Next, with our battery plugged in on the right hand side of the drone, we are going to power off. And we get a series of blinking lights. With your cell phone, go to your settings and your Wi Fi network settings. And you're going to look for a network named Tello. Ooh. And when you see a Tello, you're going to click on that to connect. You should get a check mark because what's happening is this little drone is putting out a Wi Fi signal similar to a Wi Fi network or just like a Wi-Fi network in your home that your phone is going to connect to. And apologies. What we also are going to need to do is go to the App Store and download the Tello app. For the activation. So I apologize. Yes. So go back to your app store or your play store. And do the same steps, except instead of searching for Tello EDU, we want just Tello. And that will look similar, but it's a black app with just the word Tello. Yes, so that is 
what we're gonna have to do is go through this Tello app initially to get our drone activated and to get the latest firmware on it. I just want to make sure I'm seeing the right thing. So with the Tello app downloaded, the drone powered on, connected to the Wi-Fi network of the Tello, when you power on, you're gonna see a new version detected. The update package is 15 May. So download. We're gonna hit download that. It's gonna say update firmware. And you're gonna hit start. Then you're going to see activation. Your device shall be activated before first use in order to request warranty repair and other services. Click update. Or click activate. Click authorize. And it will sh show firmware downloaded. And we're going to now have to upload that firmware to the drone. So we're going to hit update. And Paul, real quick, um, I just want to say to everyone, it, it, it could be that your drone, if your drone does not tell you to update, it, it may not, um, it may already be updated, okay? It just depends on what warehouse it came from, how long it was sitting in that warehouse and those types of things. So if you're, Matthew asked that question because he, he said that his did not show an update, it's probably up to date. Um, now, for those, for those of you that may still have trouble connecting, um, make sure that, um, that you're connecting to the drone via via wi-fi okay that's the first thing make sure that you you turn on the drone with the you know put the battery in turn the drone on connect with to it via wi-fi then make sure you download the tello app that paul just described and launch that app so that it could make sure that um it registers your drone in the cloud because if you don't do this process your tello will not take off okay this has to be it's a one-time thing but it has to be done on every drone you have. So let's just say, for example, your school bought 10 of these drones, you'd have to do this with all 10 drones before they're available to, to actually take off. Uh, Paul, Matthew had a question. Um, what what, what yes. was the version? What was the, did, did you happen to see the version for your, for your Tello? The version of the firmware? Ye it is showing right now is 02050113. Gotcha. Okay.
which was released on one five. Okay, so yeah, that that makes all the yeah. So that's probably the latest firmware. Yes, so the latest firmware, if you have 02.05.01.13, you have the latest firmware. And to see if you have the latest firmware. Way to go, Jonas. Jonas has flight. Jonas is now, his drone is now taking off. That is awesome. So if you wanna to check to see if you have the latest firmware, you're gonna click on this settings. Goodness. So this settings cog right here, tap on that. And then on more, and then go to the three dots. And that's gonna show you firmware version. And you want to have zero two zero five zero one one three. And and for those of you who have not received your drone, don't panic. Okay, we'll we, once you get your drone, we'll get you up and flying. All right, that's that's why we're here. Most certainly, and you'll be able to go back to this recording and and listen along to this section and follow along. Now your drone is activated and you have the latest firmware, so you're gonna be able to communicate with drone blocks. If anybody who has their drone has been unable to get it activated, doesn't have the latest firmware, Please submit a question now so we know. <clears throat> if you have activated your drone, you do have the latest firmware and you're flying, go ahead and land it to power the drone off. You're just going to tap the button on the side once. You don't have to hold it, just click it once. The lights on the front of the drone will shut off. Salima just posted a comment. Yeah, Salima, we, yeah, you're probably going to have to charge those batteries. Uh, we just want to make sure that everybody can at least get, you know, the drones to a point where they can take off. Uh, because keep in mind, once again, these batteries have been, drones have been probably sitting in a warehouse for a long, long time. And so they're, they're going to need to be properly charged. Right. And unfortunately, I'm going to put something, a video together to go through the a screen recording of the flight. Uh, screen and that the layout additional technical difficulties have kept me from being able to share my phone screen <clears throat> but we will make sure that each person who's uh, got a drone or will be receiving a drone will be able to get it activated and set up for those who have gotten your drone, I'm just gonna walk through what was in the box, what you have. Some of it we've already touched. It's not a lot, but it is a very advanced little system. We have the drone itself. This drone has a forward facing camera. It's five megapixels. It shoots 720p. HD, 
it live feeds directly to your cell phone once it's connected. It has some GPS built into it. So it has stability both in and outdoors. You've got four motors. It's like your standard quad. You've got four prop guards that can be removed. The drones were shipped with the prop guards off. It's plastic. You'll notice that there's two ridges on the outside of each motor. And there is kind of like two openings on the prop guards themselves. Those will click in place and lock in. All four come off. It's advised when flying in the classroom to always attach the prop guards and keep the prop guards on during flight. The prop guards are nice because the drone could bump into a wall or if you're flying and the students are trying to do um, some sort of uh, I'm drawing a blank, but you want the student to fly the drone, put a path in, and if it's going to bump into something, it's okay because they're going to learn. Now I need to adjust the flight course. So with the prop guards on, you can create a simulated village. You can create some mountains. You can put up obstacles, and it's going to be okay for that drone to make some contact. <clears throat> four motors, four propellers. On two of the motor arms, there's no marking. And on two of the motor arms, there's this little raised bit. It almost looks like a subtraction sign. What I want you to do is now look at the propeller that's attached to this arm with a little raised subtraction sign. And notice that that propeller also has a little raised ridge. And it's probably difficult to see with this camera. If I was at Jeff's, you guys could see this perfectly. And if you look at the other arm that has no raised subtraction sign, that propeller does not have any raised markings on it. So you your drone came with additional props. It's possible that someone might step on this, uh, it might get dropped. It's in the classroom, right? Students lose things. So when you're putting props on, it's very important that the motor on the arm with the subtraction sign gets the propeller that has the raised markings on it. And the arms that don't have any marking get the propellers that don't have any marking. If these get swapped and aren't put on right, the drone isn't going to fly. And, and Paul? If we look underneath, yes. No, I just wanted to say, ladies and gentlemen, now I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this, when you're working with students, chances are that drone might fly into a wall or fly into a desk. I mean, you know, whether you're working with students in person or, or via remote, so this drone, it's, it's pretty tough, but from time to time it can crash and the, and the propellers will fall off. You just need to know how to basically uh, 
replace them. So if one propeller falls off, that's good. You can know how to replace that. If you get two or three that fall off simultaneously, putting them back on is key. So, um, but that's that's part of of what happens. And what we uh, can look at now inside each kit, you've got a little uh, white packet here. Inside of this is actually a whole additional set of propellers. So you've got four new propellers. Two are clockwise and two are counterclockwise. If you look at your drone from the top down, the left front motor is clockwise spinning. The right front motor spins counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, counterclockwise. Clockwise, clockwise. And they counter rotate in order to offset the rotation of one another so that it hovers and it doesn't fall or lean or move to one direction. Also inside that white packet, little plastic uh, packaging is this silver piece. This is a prop removal tool. tool. So you can slide this under a propeller and you pull up and that removes the propeller to reattach or to install the propeller. We make sure that we have that tiny hole lined up and we push down. Just push all the way down so that you have just about enough space where you can get your prop tool back in. So there's no screws, there's no threads. These propellers can pop on and off. So as Jeff mentioned, if you happen to bump into something, even with the prop guards on, because of uh, force and these being plastic, sometimes the prop will Bump, get bumped and just bounce off. You can just push it right back on. On the bottom of our drone, we have two stereoscopic sensors. These assist the Tello with flying indoors for its landing. <clears throat> it can make a automated takeoff and landing. And that is the drone. Each member has received three of these flight batteries. Uh, battery is good for about 10 minutes of flight time. Continu you also have the chart, yep. say again? Yeah, I'm just saying continuous flight time. Each when it comes to co uh, using drone blocks and coating with the drone, once it's getting down to that 30%, though, usually you're going to need to kind of rotate out to the next battery. You also got the charging hub, which will allow you to take all three batteries, set all three batteries into the charging hub, plug that in, and charge one at a time, but you don't have to worry about unplugging and plugging or removing and reinstall, uh, reinserting another battery. You can fly for the day and then plug it in and have it charged by the afternoon. Whew. 
this brings us to the end of the unboxing. You have the drone with batteries, charging hub. You now have both apps downloaded, the Tello app and the Tello EDU app, which are provided by the manufacturer that will allow manual flight of the drone. The Tello EDU app also has some interesting features that allow for some basic drag and drop block coding. But for the sake of this cohort and where we're gonna be taking things using the Tello app to kind of fly and operate the drone manually with students, maybe to simulate some drone racing is gonna be your best bet. You can pair it with a remote controller. But when it comes to learning math, geography, mapping, and integrating drones from a tangible lesson, we're gonna be moving in and now in this section talking about the drone block software itself, which each member has received a one year membership to. Is there any questions before moving on about the drone itself, connecting to it, activation, batteries, If not, got one question popped up. So I'll go with the battery question first here, answering that. The, they are similar to digital cameras and other uh, smart batteries to where once you have them uh, full charge. You don't want to let them sit and leave them on the charger. Um, you don't want to let the battery sit for a long period of time and not get used. So flying, you know, weekly, bi-weekly, at least once a month and cycling the batteries is going to be best for them. Oh, the gray plastic X-shaped object with 910 drones on it. That is, <laughs> that right there is a neat little keychain. That's just supposed to look like a, 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 that is supposed to look like a little racing drone, like a five inch, uh, it just doesn't have props on it. So that is a mini drone that was 3D printed by Stemworld City. And it's kind of just a neat thing to show you what 3D printers can do. And a little thank you to all the members of the cohort. You can put a little keychain through it, put it on your uh, Christmas tree next year, set it on the desk. And it's okay if you happen to leave the battery sitting overnight. It's not going to be detrimental. Um, it's just best practice, best practice to not keep it. <laughs> yeah, that does not attach to the drone. That's just a, a neat little thank you. The membership started the first of this year. And right now we're gonna go ahead and get anybody activated who joined prior to um, the first of the year. So I'm going to go ahead now, jump into drone blocks. Oh, and also, before we do that, I'm going to take this link, copy it and paste it in the chat. directly to Jeff. For 
all members of the cohort, we need to get our NCDOT government and commercial operator permit. You take a 10 question exam online, it doesn't cost anything. If you visit the link that was just shared in the chat or the link that you see here, it's eaviation.ncdot.gov forward slash UAS forward slash home forward slash login. You can download the study guide here, read through it, create an account. Once you've created that account, then go ahead and take the test that's required for your commercial and government. It will ask for your FAA remote pilot certificate. You don't have to have a valid certificate. You can put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or leave it blank. But it's just important at the state level for, for us as members of the cohort to just go ahead and get this free permit for operating and using drones commercially or for government purposes. Next, I'm pasting a link for drone blocks in the chat. Uh, thank you, Bill. I might have said 10 questions. It could have maybe it increased or the last time I uh, had taken it, but all online, he said 27 questions. Uh, you can have your study guide open in order to help you understand these rules and regulations and get that permit. Now, just put into the chat is the link for drone blocks. The link is learn.droneblocks.io. For all of the NCE UAS cohort members that joined prior to January 1st, your account has been created. So anyone today that is tuning in and has their Tello, your membership is active. So go to the link that was provided in the chat and in the top right, you will see an option to log in. Once you get to the login screen, you are going to use the email address that you provided when signing up to receive the Tello drone. <clears throat> the password that you're going to use. will be 2021 drone blocks. Let me just make sure. Yes, drone blocks 2021. Okay, while some people are getting logged in, Oscar uh, asked a very good question. He said that he noticed that when the drone was idle, it shuts down to save power. That is correct. After five minutes, the drone, if, if there's no activity, if the drone senses there's no activity from any of the apps, it will shut down automatically to save power. Um, now, the question was, is there a way to have it automatically reconnect to your cell phone? Uh, actually, I think in your phone, and it depends on your phone, You when you 
connect to your drone via Wi-Fi, you have to select the little checkbox that says automatically connect afterwards. So that should help you out. Very good question. Thank you, Oscar. So you go to that drone blocks login screen. If anybody's having trouble who had joined the cohort prior to January 1st, anyone who has a drone, if you're having trouble accessing your account using the email address you provided and the password DroneBlox2021, please let us know. Terry, I know um, from looking at the list, you will not have access just at this point. Um, I know you mentioned earlier, you don't have the Tello drone yet either. All the members that joined after January 1st will be getting their drones and drone blocks membership prior to, should be prior to the end of this month, but you will have both the drone and membership access prior to February 9th, which is our second session. Renee, are you using your mcdowell.k12.nc.us email? Okay. And password drone blocks 2021. No capitals in the password. It is possible for anyone having trouble logging in that an email, a character may have got input incorrectly and that we will look into. You can put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. I apologize, Renee, that that is not working. And I, I am, I'll double check that we have your email um, input correctly and we will follow up with you. Now, for all of you who have been able to gain access, this will be the screen that you are looking at at this point. You've got my courses, all courses in the top right, and you have a profile section where you can edit your profile, uh, add, change, credit card, manage subscriptions. You're not gonna have a subscription here or credit card information, and you will not need to put any in. Um, you are on a subscription under the cohort. What you're seeing here now is the courses that you have access to. Your percentage that you've completed it. And this is growing. This right here is something that I want and we are gonna get access as soon as possible to our newest members. Between now and our February 9th session, 
we want you to get in here as much as possible. This drone blocks is the resource that educators have and can use in order to support that integration of drones into the classroom. Each of you will find that there's one thing that might pertain more to what you're doing. There's a course here that is on dance. It's using this drone and programming it in a way that shows off that um, uh, the creative, the, the steam, the art um, side of things. So it's not just about uh, rigid numbers, uh, technical. You can, you can do a lot more with this than just what people would think of as coding or programming. Coding and programming is just the beginning. Once you get into these courses, you're going to see that they're broken down very well into different videos. I'm getting all these pop ups, I'm trying to chase away. And each course is going to have this curriculum that's broken down so that you can watch these videos as you um, have time and you can always go back and rewatch these. These are also uh, in specific environments and settings you might be able to share um, in the future some of this with students. Using what you learn from diving into these different courses. And Jeff, I, I, Jeff, if you can hear me, I think you're still on. I lost you. Um, if you want to call back, if you, uh, uh, if you had to take a call. Um, but if you chime in, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of blind right now. So having access to this membership over the next year and now having the tool, having the drone that you can Hey, all right, got Jeff back. Having this access to this membership is going to let each of you dive deeper and you can see advanced teleprogramming. So we have lesson curriculum one, we have two, and we had three, I lost it. I gotta scroll down further, but there's three. So you can take yourself through these and develop an understanding of how this works. You have the tools, you've got the hardware and you have the software. Now it's operational procedure time. So this cohort, and our future sessions is going to dive into how myself, Jeff, how the industry and the state is leveraging drones. And we are going to be helping each of you understand how to not just follow the course and what's outlined, but how to actually create and make for yourself in order to engage your students in the best way to reach them. The, um, Jeff, is there anything you might want to add in oh, regards uh, to? Absolutely, Paul. Hey, to, to all the teachers out there, you know, the first thing I would do, I can't, I mean, I'm not in the business of telling people what to do, but I always will share what I would do. Go through these courses, take a look at them. Um, you know, and, and sure, a lot of it's going to be a little overwhelming because uh, Dennis Baldwin, who wrote Drone Blocks, 
Uh, he's a really great guy. Paul and I have actually talked with him, uh, but he's very techie. <laughs> he speaks techie. That's his native language. But don't worry about that. That's why you have Jeff, right? I'm, I'm your translator, so to speak. But go through some of these lessons and just learn about the things you can do with the drone. OK, that's that's the purpose of this course in the beginning of, of this portal, which I thank Paul for getting everybody signed up for. See what's possible. OK, and then once you see what's possible, then you can shoot us messages and we can plan in our sessions to kind of show you. All right. Now that 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 you know what it can do, this is how you make it do it, because there are going to be some technical snags and things that you might run into or things that Dennis does that you really quite don't understand how to do. But that's why we're here. And in future sessions, as I stated in the presentation, we will show you how to integrate this this drone into your classroom and make it effective for instruction. But I urge you to look through all of these courses to see exactly what's possible. Yes, and what I, as you're looking in this, you can see in these bottom right sections, it's gonna tell you which drones can you use for this course. You've got the Tello and the Tello EDU. So any course that has Tello EDU is one that you will be able to go through and actually fly with your drone. One of the first ones that I'd like everyone to go into between now and February 9th is the introduction to Tello EDU drone programming with drone blocks. This is a series of short videos and it starts with safety. Okay, while that's coming up, Paul, Oscar asked the question, are there CEU yes. associated with these courses or even this presentation? All right, so from it, it, from what I understand, and this is what I know about CEU credit, um, for every online class, uh, every two hours equals a one hour CEU credit, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody can, collect, can uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And every one hour face-to-face -face is actually worth one uh, 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 an hour towards a CEU, but you got to have 10 CEUs to get to get a one hour or one 10 hours to get one CEU credit. Um, so if if during the course of this session you accumulate enough hours, um, then we will we will sign off on that for you. I will be more than happy to write that letter. Um, I'll be I'll be more than happy to write that letter for you to so that you can get credit for it. Now as far as drone blocks. I'm not 100% sure it is an online course. And if I'm not mistaken, they I'm not sure if they um, do offer a completion certificate, Paul. Um, we might want to reach out to them to find out if they do. But in the course, in the um, event that they do, I'm pretty sure that you can present that to your professional development office and obtain CEU credit for it. And Paul and I will be more than happy to write that letter for you so that if they have any questions, you can attest that you did attend the session to complete the work. But thank Yes, and they are credited by a stem.org. So that should help as well. Organization. So there should be something, there might be something there. And this is really exciting. Drone blocks is not it's the best educational software out for drones in the classroom. And it is only at its very beginning. Um, in 2020, especially with the change in the way everybody's learning remotely, um, they've done a lot to improve the platform and they're always making it better. Um, so, I'm sure they're always thinking of things like that. And as Jeff mentioned, this is there's ways for uh, us to get that CEU 
uh, 0.1 per hour um, of online and get you what you need to show that you know you've gone through education um, related to supporting your classroom. Yes. Yes, that is possible. And part of this cohort is exactly that. It's helping educators. Okay, and, and Jennifer, th this is exactly what this cohort is about. And I'm gonna try to not take up too much more of uh, the, your guys' time in the next maybe 15 minutes. I'm gonna go through what businesses uh, and organizations are leveraging drones here in the state and shout out where in the state they are located. And hopefully after this, it could help folks, uh, you know, the members of this co cohort get a better understanding of where the jobs are and where they're going to be. But Jennifer, I love I loved that you're thinking career pathways this early. Kudos, thank you. So drones in North Carolina, understanding how drones are being used by the businesses in the state is going to help enormously when it comes to integrating drones as an educational tool into the classroom. Knowing what drone delivery looks like or maybe how it works or how construction companies or surveying companies are using drones is what's going to help you understand drone blocks and the lessons and the activities that we discuss going forward in the cohort through the throughout the year. Also being aware of the businesses and where they're located is going to help connect and partner, um, help you connecting and, and partnering and working with these local companies who can help provide the knowledge, training, and potentially funding to help do more uh, with drones in the classroom. Now we're gonna kind of go on a virtual field trip, doing it through the internet um, in order to showcase who is using drones where and how in the state. So first we're gonna talk about the delivery of items and goods. We have three drone delivery, commercial drone delivery operations in our state, located very much spread out. And chances are you might be near um, one of them. The first switch over is Flytrex. F-L-Y-T-R-E-X. Flytrex is a manufacturer of delivery drones. So this drone you see pictured right here is the drone that they, they designed and built for drone deliveries. They're an Israeli-based company that's looking to really make a big impact here in the States. Located in Fayetteville, North Carolina, partnering with Walmart and Causey Aviation Unmanned, drone deliveries are taking place to customers' houses. So uh, right now, uh, and this is part of the operation that I am uh, working with as an employee of Causey Aviation Unmanned, customers can place an order on an app, just like Grubhub or Uber Eats, and then we deliver it to them using a drone Pretty much, this is um, some varying design concepts, but pretty much just like this drone here, we are delivering um, food to customers from Walmart, Starbucks, and Osaka. Flychex plans to have operations grow across the state, and they're hoping and planning to make a footprint 
from a manufacturing standpoint here in North Carolina, where employees will be putting uh, manufacturing and building these delivery drones. Causey Aviation Unmanned is the company that's flying these drones and, uh, do, and, and doing the operations. So right here in Fayetteville, North Carolina, you can come out, you can see it, you can, you can experience a drone delivery. You know, once the Walmart neighborhood market here finds value in it, Walmart, you know, likes things that make stuff more efficient. So most of our cohort members, you can probably think uh, if you were to put Walmart in search in your phone, there's a good chance you're within three to five miles, if not closer to a Walmart, which will put you in delivery range. Another drone delivery operation taking place here in the state of North Carolina is with the company Zipline, Z-I-P-L-I-N-E. Zipline uses a fixed wing drone, like what you see pictured here, to deliver packages using a drop system where it kind of parachutes down to that landing point. Um, it uses all sorts of calculations in order to determine based on its height at what point the drone should actually release the package so that it can, you know, make that trajectory to actually hit the intended point of delivery. This drone is launched using like a, a rail system and it's recovered using a big kind of like a bungee cord. Ziplines got started in Africa. Um, you can see in this video, they found uh, this drone has in, in a great distance. It can cover up to 40, 50 miles. So in the, uh, in the areas um, within Africa to where you would re regularly have to travel days to cover that 40 miles, you can now send um, units of blood within uh, a fraction of the time, 30 minutes, 60 minutes. Um, so Zipline has started some operations in the Charlotte area um, of the state of North Carolina doing deliveries of medical supplies to medical campuses across the state. And the third delivery operation that's taking place within the state of North Carolina is um, UPS along with uh, Wake Med. UPS has uh, gotten authorizations along with Amazon and some other companies, but here in North Carolina, they are using uh, this drone here to move uh, samples, uh, medical samples from one side of the campus to another side of the campus. So usually where an individual might have to uh, you know, walk through these long hallways and corridors and um, the time that it takes, now you can just move these medical uh, samplings quicker over the campus. It's not the most efficient, right, operation, but it's a start. So, so now imagine once regulations allow, now we can move samples from one hospital, maybe to another hospital or from a testing facility to a hospital. And this here is, is going on in Raleigh, North Carolina. All three of these companies, um, Fly, Flytrex with Causey Unmanned Aviation, uh, Zipline and UPS with WakeMed are employing drone delivery pilots right here in the state of North Carolina. Um, in the public safety side of things, you might be surprised when it comes to public safety, they're not always like out front, hey, we have drones, but more and more, and with the help of different organizations, more fire departments, police departments are getting access to drones to help support what they are doing. In uh, 
Burga in the Pender County uh, area, you have Pender County Fire and EMS and Pender County Fire and EMS is like leading, you know, the way in training and just using drones in order to support their operations. You've got Wake Forest Fire Department, who is also doing like big things with drones to support their uh, life saving and public support missions. Most recently, Charlotte Police and Fire Department um, went through some training with the North Carolina Public Safety Drone Academy to get pilots trained up. The NC Public Safety Drone Academy is like the public safety tr um, drone training um, leader in the state of North Carolina. Uh, Riley Beeman is the uh, president and founder of that company. They're located in Troy, North Carolina, and they're always working with schools um, to help, you know, raise awareness, get, get some drones in front of students. So if you're in that area of Troy, that's one of those companies that you need to be aware of. Also, the Elizabeth City Police Department in Elizabeth City um, is using and leveraging drones, and uh, one of their pilots also is um, very adamant about education and working with students. So if you're in the Elizabeth City area, uh, there is some folks in the public safety side that might be willing to you know, talk to students or um, discuss how drones are being used. For infrastructure inspections across the state, the North Carolina Department of Transportation is, is leading the way. So in drones, when it comes to states and state DOT, uh, back in 2017, uh, 2018, Darshan Vakrin, who is uh, connected with AUVSI, and some other members um, of the DOT just, you know, did a lot of uh, work to lay the ground for the state. And that's why we've got all this, you know, three drone delivery companies here. We have a lot of companies doing advanced things. So in the state, uh, the DOT is using drones for bridge inspections, and they've got some advanced, uh, advanced operational waiver to go beyond visual line of sight. Uh, I know that the state DOT has um, different units and uh, can't think of the word, but sections. So there's pilots in all different areas of the state who are familiar with drone operations and you know might be uh, accessible to talk to students. In the Greensboro area, you've got a company called High Caps who's working in construction. Um, High Caps. So high caps is um, infrastructure based using drones, using drones for thermal inspections. Um, so taking a drone, going up, looking at the roof of a building and, and, and looking at its thermal efficiency, flying at night in order to really determine the thermal efficiency because you don't have this heating um, and changes from the sun during the day. So if you're in that Greensboro area, and have interest in you know finding out who, what, um, what they're doing, what jobs are, are available. That is one of those businesses in industry. The military and defense side. So you'll see here like Tough Stump Technologies, Booz Allen Hamilton, and the United States Army. If you're in this Fayetteville area, you have the placement, the um, drawing a blank, the the exam right for getting into um, the military, like what branch you're going to get. So by integrating drone and drone technology um, and discussing that with our students helps them become more technically, um, uh, you know, knowledgeable so that when they're taking a placement exam to get a job in the military, they could get the best job that they're fit for. Um, but Definitely a lot of growth in that military side. So in Fayetteville, being able to connect with people and there, you know, is access to, to support and companies like that always want to work with education. The power and transmission 
uh, dis transmission and distribution side is going to be the, you know, one of these large growing, there's so many power poles and there's um, power lines and substations and there's a very, eh, we need our power, right? Folks have to have the electricity, the lights on in order for businesses, in order for us to have school, education and things like that. So a focus has been really uh, seen on using drones to more efficiently manage our grid system as a whole, whether that might be, you know, trying to go on a more independent grid system with solar panels and using drones to, you know, look at solar panels or power lines, substations. Duke Energy last year just hired lots of pilots. I don't know the number. I'll try to determine what that number is and, and you know, talk with some of the folks there. Um, but these are jobs that are firing a part 107. Um, you know, they're more than willing to work with high school graduates, um, folks that understand the technology and understand safety and people that are just, just good people. Um, five of the ways that Duke, and they're doing this across the state, so it's not just one location based out of Charlotte is where a lot of this is taking place. But ways that Duke has integrated drone um, inspections and the use of drones is from solar plant um, management, using it after storms. So 2016, 2017, the hurricanes, the floodings that we have, they're using it to inspect tower equipment and track construction. So, you know, 3D modeling, which we'll talk about more as we go into this cohort, mapping and 3D modeling is a great way to see what's there without having to be there. And if 2020 showed us anything is, you know, or, or, or if anything was asked of people in 2020, you know, is how, how can we be there but not actually be there. Um, and I think educators, you guys might totally be able to understand that more than you know anybody else uh, out there is being there and connecting and seeing, but not actually being there. So Duke Energy and then Halifax. So there's 27 electric co-ops that are spread across the state of North Carolina and they're associated really with the different counties. So just like being close to a Walmart, there's probably a really good chance that there is an electric membership corporation within your area. And they're most likely levering dr leveraging drones in one way or another. And Paul, if I Elec could interject yes. real quick, they also do the yes. Bright Ideas grants, folks. Those are great grants yes. to go after. Bright Ideas yes. grants from the, from the, um, from the co-ops. Yes, and I was going to say that because in the public safety side, we also see that the electric member co-ops are also very big supporters on the public safety side um, and, and annually support the fire and police with uh, grant opportunities, um, which locally in, in Cumberland County, we've seen some uh, departments use to acquire some drones and, and build out their fleets. So connecting with the membership co-ops what we're going to see and you're going to learn is that, you know, you, um, you as an educator have as much to offer, especially when it comes to drones right now than anybody else, because these companies want to integrate drones, but they need the people that get it and they need the people that understand it in the industry and the adoption of drones really isn't going to happen for a few more years until we get those, um, you know, students who won't be students anymore, they'll be young women, young men, that are gonna go out into the state and are really gonna help with the impl implementation and integration of drones uh, on the mass commercially. From, uh, from the energy transmission and distribution, we move into the construction side where again, having that visual imagery, you can see Clancy and Thays, they're a construction company um, based out of Raleigh. They have an office in Charlotte as well. 
and they have some uh, a smaller I believe in the Wilmington area so they are very much spread across the, the state and they work on large projects they do a lot with mapping modeling and photography as you can see you go to their website and what's there drone photos so not only are they using it to support their business um, track progress they're also using this imagery from a marketing standpoint. So there's as much value in drones for you know, marketing, selling, showcasing, demonstrating as there is for extracting data. Not every student is gonna want to create a 3D map or model. However, they may say, wow, that's really neat capturing this photo, editing this photo, or maybe creating a video. There's just so many different things that drones as a tool can be used for. Also in the construction side, in the coats, I wanna go back just to get this on the screen. Duke Energy in Charlotte, Halifax EMC in the Enfield, North Carolina area is leveraging drones. So any educators in that Enfield area. I skipped over the agriculture and wildlife, but I'll touch on this. The Department of Agriculture is using drones to actually track like feral hogs and wildlife across the state, not just for like your crop, the, what people typically think of uh, agriculture, because there's other things that the DOA is responsible for than just the plant itself. Precision Hawk is based in Raleigh, North Carolina. They employ, they're a large company. They have a good amount of employees and they're doing more on the software side of things as well as PIX4D is based in Raleigh. These are companies, Precision Hawk and PIX4D that might be interested in working with schools in order to get you know, educational opportunities out there. I mentioned Clancy and Thays based in Raleigh and Charlotte, and then ECLS Global, uh, ECLS Global, veteran owned company based in Coates, North Carolina, that's also flying drones. The last on the commercial side that I wanna end with is the photo and video. So drones, when you think of drones, the first thing most people think of is photo and video, using it to make uh, take pictures and capture video. There's so many companies across the state that are doing that, and there's some that are doing it really well. Nine Miles Media is based in Raleigh. Um, it was founded by an extremely nice young man. Uh, his name's Ben, uh, goodness, Ben Armstrong, I believe is his last name. Um, uh, he's a volunteer fire uh, man, but he's very much about connecting and, and providing educational opportunities. So anybody in that Raleigh area that is in their school involved with photo, video, um, digital media, marketing and things like that, Nine Miles Media um, and Ben Armstrong is one of those companies that you uh, want to keep an eye on or look out, or reach out to. The last is that I'll mention here commercial wise is Lighthouse Visuals. They work in three different states. They've got about 10 drone pilots. You can see right here, boom, open up their site, free aerial photography with all photo packages. So this is a company now that Aerial photography is something that they're giving as a standard with all their photo packages. So what that tells me and what that should tell anybody who might want to work for this company as a photographer is you need to be a drone pilot. You need to be familiar with the uses of drones because they're giving their employees a drone to fly. It's just their responsibility, you know, to get certified. So Flying drones, operating drones, drones in the commercial industry are going to become a standard. And when you look at these, this company, um, you've got individuals spread across the entire state who are 107 certified, who understand photography and who go out and fly drones for a living. This company will only get bigger. 
that is your commercial companies that across the state that are leveraging drones. Lighthouse Visuals is in Greenville, North Carolina. Christy Low Video Productions for anyone in that Fayetteville, Cumberland County area is leveraging drones in video production and is always looking to um, you know, connect and share um, and provide educational opportunities. Lastly here, I just wanna to touch on the high schools and colleges and universities throughout across the state who are definitely resources to connect with when it comes to drones and drones in education. High schools, Scotland High in Scotland County um, has a great drone program. Um, you know, being able to reach out to them, Jonathan McRae, um, I'm drawing a blank, but the, the teacher there at the high school, um, you know, they're really doing a great job at integrating drones. Hoke High in Hoke County um, has a phenomenal drone aviation program. So any, anyone in the middle schools, high schools, you know, in that area, um, you know, reach out or something to be aware of. And then in the Elizabeth City area, you've got the Northeast Academy for Aerospace and Advanced Technologies. Um, that's the NEAT Academy who, um, you know, Jeff and I have worked with and supported and they're doing great things with drones and they're all about connecting and working with other um, people, uh, other schools. Their students have started a drone racing um, uh, team, you know, so they're, they're getting into using these drones right here, um, some Tello drones, getting into racing and finding ways to, you know, bring drones in, in a fun, engaging, active way to students. Colleges and universities. Fayetteville State University in Fayetteville has recently um, built out their drone fleet, and they're using drones to really um, develop remote sensing um, solutions and identifying how drones can assist with remote sensing in, and in that GIS field. Uh, North Carolina State University is leveraging drones uh, on their campus actively. NC Agriculture and Technical University in Greensboro is also actively uh, engaged in, in drone education and research. They have students there that are building their own drones. Um, figuring out how to fly them. NCANT has partnered with the NCDOT um, on a uh, identifying how drones can be used for bridge inspections. So they're doing some exciting things there with research. Elizabeth City State University in Elizabeth City also has a drone uh, program. They're integrating drones and using drones within education. Wilmington University in Wilmington, North Carolina has an associate's um, program in drone education. So students that are looking to go to a university in the state and actually, you know, get a education that's focused on unmanned systems, they can do that at Wilmington University. And very, very important for everyone, um, especially the members of this cohort to be aware of is the community college system across the state of North Carolina is really from what I've seen is doing a phenomenal job at trying to bring some sort of drone education to their communities, whether it's through the continuing education department, if it's through curriculum, the opportunities are there. So members of this cohort who may end up gaining, you know, some, some interest in getting a 107 certification, the community colleges across the state, there are a lot that are providing really cost-effective, and I mean like inexpensive um, educational opportunities to become, to get the knowledge you need to take your remote pilot test. All right, that was a lot of, um, a lot of information. It was, um, hopefully now you, you might be aware of around the state, who's using drones, or at least who in your area um, is operating drones and who you might be able to connect with outside of um, 
of this cohort. And you know what, maybe we'll, we'll most likely bring some of these folks in to kind of share what they're doing um, with, with our members. So at this point, we're pretty much uh, cleared for a landing um, to wrap things up. Any, uh, any, and pretty much every successful fleet starts with uh, one drone and, and grows from there. there. There are some, you know, where it's like, hey, we buy 10 and we just start, but the majority of programs start with just a single drone getting something and finding out, identifying what works and what doesn't work and then growing from there. So at this point, all of the, you know, all of our members, everybody who's a part of this cohort has that one drone and, and has began um, to build their fleet. The drone block software everyone's gonna have access to, that right there is the, is the software for success. Um, it's a, th this session is a bit of a fire hose, so um, some of it might not have totally clicked yet, but um, by the end of session two, you, you will definitely have a deeper understanding of what is meant by uh, software for success when we talk about drone blocks. Understanding the fun fundamentals. Uh, yeah, I went there. I, air, I, well, I quoted fun and fundamentals. Um, because I think uh, if you if you do look at this from like the, the the big picture, this stuff is fun. Even even just like hearing about what companies across the state, it's it's fun. And I think everybody who was able to activate their drone um, today and get it airborne, even just with a cell phone, uh, I am I am pretty sure I, I would. I'd put 10 bucks on it that like you had an immense amount of fun, maybe even more fun than you had all of last year, um, which wouldn't be that tough considering how last year went, but still this is fun. And, um, and for your students, especially the reason why drones have been popular is because they can be fun. Somebody once said, in one of our drone, um, uh, one of our drone camps at FTCC, uh, one of our girls' drone camps, it was the first session. Somebody named Jeff Epps uh, told all the girls. He said, "If it was easy, everyone would be doing it," uh, because someone said, "This is not easy," and that's that's kind of like Jeff's one of his go-to's. There is, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it and everybody is not doing this. Um, everyone doesn't have drones in the classroom, even though they could be considered one of the um, greatest educational tools right now. And the reason is because it's, it's not easy. Um, but with the right support and uh, tools, it can be easy. So now you have the hardware, you have the software, you got the tools, um, and through this cohort, you will be able to develop the operational procedures to be successful. And that's what we're here to help you develop. So Jeff, I don't know, did you wanna add, do you have anything to add? No, nope, great session. Landing? Great session. Somebody asked the question, how, many, how long is this cohort going to last? I, personally, I don't plan for it to end. Um, and, uh, you know, we may break over the summer, uh, what, but then again, I, once I think about it, Hey, anybody up for a summer teaching Academy where we go over some real stuff to get you ready for next year. I think that would be great. So no, I don't plan for it to end. We just began. And the answer to that is right here in our real last slide. And I just want to say thank you to all the members. Like, thank you for your time and attention while participating, you know, as a member in this cohort. The future of the NCE UASC, like, what does that look like? As of right now, this will go, at least we've got the one-year membership for Dronebox. I mean, we're running this through the year of 2021. And the, the idea is that at some point, this cohort develops and creates some kind of maybe committee or board or group of members 
um, who can help continue to grow and guide and direct this cohort well, well into the future, um, working with more partners, not just Sterile City and 910 Drones, right. you know, a way to bring more folks into this group so it grows. Um, and, and, and that committee or board or whatever it becomes will have the ability to uh, you know, create clubs within different parts of the state or, or um, uh, nurture and develop competitions and, and, and different things in order to continue the integration of drones um, within of schools. Speaking of competition, <laughs> uh, Paul and I, we were on a call, well, I was on a call with uh, Morgan Crawford and the the topic came up of a local competition. And you know, well, you guys will learn me. I, I, it's very hard for me to say no to anything. So I actually pitched the idea of an inter cohort competition. Now, what would something like that look like? Well, through the training we're gonna provide you and as you work with your students, if any of you are looking to put together a small team of students, Let's have a virtual competition. Let's do it. Um, the North Carolina Business Ed uh, Business Committee for Education, they're like talking like they want to fund it. As a matter of fact, they said they would fund it. So if you're interested, let us know and we'll do this in May. I'm telling you, we'll do it. And um, we'll make it happen. Someone's asking, is there a place we can share our lessons with each other? Hey, Jennifer, we'll make that happen too, okay? We're the yes guys. <laughs> yes, this, this will, this, the, 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 the one of the big intents of this is to create a group of people, uh, of educators that can support one another and share with one another. So whether that's a face, most likely it, it will be a Facebook group that will be created. Oh, hey, uh, Bill Lewis is saying uh, a Google Classroom. I agree, we'll make it happen, Bill. Yep. Okay, we're going to put out some uh, an email between now and our next session. We're going to bring a, a good amount of this together. And that's the answer, right? A competition in May to where we bring students of our members in, because that is what's going to help us demonstrate that the cohort members have gotten the tools to teach the students. That's the goal here, not just connect with the educators, but we are doing this so that you can go into the classroom and take that to the next step. And a competition in May with students is uh, absolutely just seems like that's the step. Um, that's, that's the right step. And that's going to put us in a great position um, to move forward for the second half of the year. So uh, let me go back. So session two, between now and then, we're going to get everybody a drone. We're going to get everybody connected um, with their drone blocks membership. We're going to get everybody logged in. Um, between now and the ninth, jump in there, look through some of those initial lessons, um, open up drone blocks, you know, connect the drone, feel it out. In session two, on Tuesday, February 9th at 4 p.m., Jeff and I will be joining you again, where we really dive into the tangible teaching with drone blocks, and you're going to get the introduction to the Remote Pilot Academy. Um, and yeah, you're really going to get an understanding of, of what, uh, what can be done with what you have. So if Jeff, if there's anything else you want to add, um, if not, We'll we see can. you next time, because I'm telling you, I can go all night, folks. I'm going to let them go, because I can go all night. <laughs> Thanks, all right. guys. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Um, we appreciate it, and you will be hearing us via email. Um, so keep an eye on your inbox. Thank you, everybody, and have a great night.